going here. Um, Bruce is going to uh, speak first, um, and I want to thank Bruce for coming. He's nice enough to donate his time to come and speak to you guys about stuff that is really, really, really important when the time comes to go find a job. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bruce for the, sec for the first part, and then I'm going to come into the second part. So with that, Bruce. Awesome. I'll start. Happy Wednesday, everybody. So Jay told me I have until midnight to speak, so I'm going to cover a lot of stuff. And, uh, I'm going to give you 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes at most. I really want to provide an overview about contract issues because, as Jay alluded to, at some point they're all going to get a contract. At some point, I hope people are fawning over you. are getting two or three or four or five different opportunities. Say, we can't wait to have you guys to join us. And if you're trying to make them apples to apples and figure out what it is, whether it's academic, whether it's private practice, or some sort of hybrid model no matter what your specialty is in terms of different things to think about. So there was a handout. Um, I speak regularly to different uh, residency and fellowship programs all around the area and beyond the area. My main office is right at 15th and Market Street if you're in Center City and head of our phones, healthcare groups. So I've literally over the years helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of physicians and hospitals and academic medical centers and surgery centers, uh, billing providers with all of the sort of business and medicine type issues. So, there's a bunch of different slides. I'm not really going to spend time walking through them. It's more background information for you. More importantly, at the back of the handout, there's um, a bunch of different articles. Uh, I write regularly for different publications, and in my spare time, I don't like to write articles quoting Supreme Court justices, and I'm going to venture a guess that none of you want to read articles quoting Supreme Court justices. So I try to make things topical, relevant, timely. There's an article in the back. I think I put the back where if you're a fan of baseball, where I analogize where you should be your last year's training because you need to make baseball season. So where should you be by spring training, by the All-Star break, by the World Series. If you're a fan of music, there's an article I put in the back where you use song titles to illustrate term and termination provisions and contracts. Jay and I actually just very recently wrote an article, Jay can hold up the magazine in a national publication that just came out, um, talking about different types of insurance. I think I put a copy of that article in there different things they need to think about. Um, the other article I put that I think will be hopefully fun for you to think about, I assume for many of you this is the first time once you're finishing training that you're going out to get a little job, uh, maybe had a gap year or two, but first time you're really going to go out into the workforce for hopefully a long-term arrangement. Um, so you probably don't have a lot of interviewing experience. Um, all of you, I'm going to guess, have different types of dating experience. So it very much when you have a job interview process, it's like a dating game. It's really a dating game in terms of what the employer's expectations for you are, what your expectations for the prospective employer are. So actually, I think it was Match.com I went to. I looked up their top 10 dating tips and wrote an article about that, analogizing the things that you all need to think about when you're on the dating scene for a job in terms of things to think about how the whole process works. Um, I didn't include, I did not include salary information in the, in the book because of all the different specialties that Jay was kind enough to have you all here for. If you have specific questions about salary information, just shoot me an email. I'm happy to share with you whatever salary information I have so you can be the best consumer possible. If you remember nothing else I've talked about today, honestly, if you remember nothing else I've talked about today, I'm going to take for granted that when all of you are done training, you're going to be a great clinician. What I want to help you become is a better business person. Uh, and I know many of you got into medicine and say, I don't want to think about business. I want to heal people, help people, cure people. Um, unfortunately, you're in a business. Whether you're in a large academic medical center, whether you're a solo practitioner, or something in between, you're a business. So I want you to understand sort of the business aspects of what you need to think about. So as it relates to the contract, I'll give you like four or five different big picture things you need to think about. We could do a much longer presentation. Um, I've spoken to some of your programs over the years. If you want to have me come out or have Jay come out, easily do like an hour presentation when you do your regular thing. I'm going to give you the sort of the Reader's Digest version so you can get to hear all of Jay's helpful information and also get to eat some good food as well. Um, so, a couple of big things for your contract. The first is compensation. Obviously, you all need to pay for what you do. Don't be blinded by how much somebody's going to pay you. Um, understand what the market bears. I could make contracts for any one of you that pays you 50 grand more in one job than the other. The job paying you 50 grand less is actually a much better short term opportunity. There's a variety of different ways that an employer can play games in terms of how they set something up for you. You want to understand where the marketplace is for your specialty in the geographic region that you're looking to work, but don't be blinded by the dollars. Uh, there's lots of different formulas an employer could use. Um, some employers might say it's a straight base salary, okay, make sure it's competitive. Find out how it changes from year to year. Find out what bonus opportunities may present as you're doing it. 
Other employers might say, listen, we're going to pay you based off productivity or collections. You say, great, awesome, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to take extra cautious, I'm going to make more money. If I went around the room, I'm not going to put it on the spot, ask you all what productions or collections are going to be. You're all going to have an answer. If I'm the employer, it's only my answer that matters. Right? So if I give you all of my medical assistance patients, I give you all of my Medicare patients, I give you all of my private insurance patients, see the same number of patients through the course of the year, same billing person working on the collection efforts, who do you think is going to earn more money if it's collections or cash in the door? Somebody's seen the medical assistance patients, somebody's seen the Medicare patients, somebody's seen private insurance patients. Private insurance is not going to make more money. For not doing anything except for the patients that have signed in. Depending upon your specialty, there's different ways an employer can rearrange the schedule to accommodate those needs. Um, so I understand how the compensation formula works. Some of you might see a model, the figurative, not literal, what you kill. On the one hand, we measure all the productivity in terms of what we're doing. On the other hand, we measure all the overhead expenses. In principle, that sounds great. What's in the overhead? Is the overhead the office space that you never visit? Is there overhead the PA who you never work with, or the MP who you never work with, or the MA who you don't use? Is there overhead paying for the newest, greatest, and latest equipment that your practice or your employer wanted to get you don't necessarily need, but it's a big expense that you're going to spread across the expenses for None of you want to see your salary sort of go like this from month to month. Because one month the expenses are here, the collections are here, the next month the expenses are still here, the collections drop because Medicare, Medicaid, or Blue Cross, or whatever it is, doesn't make their payment that money. So you never want to see yourself underwater in terms of how the compensation models work. So understand how the formulas work, understand the bonus opportunities in terms of what's being presented. The second big area of uh, contracts to think about, the first big area is compensation. The second big area is term and termination. I'd love to say the first job you take will be your last. 30 years from now, they're going to hand your picture out in the main lobby, you a distinguished chair after you, thank you for your invaluable contributions to the practice or the department or the division. The likelihood is you're going to switch jobs with some degree of frequency. Statistically, half of you will likely look for a new job within the first three years of your first job. Yeah. Hopefully by your choice, rather than by your employer's choice. Um, so there's different things to think about. What's the initial term? How many years is it? Does it automatically renew? Or do I have to affirmatively ask it for it to renew? How does the contract end? There's different ways of contracting and there's without cause. To use the dating example, the marriage or the relationship is no longer working, so we're going to terminate the relationship. The last time you have an elongated job search is really right now. Because right now is the last time you have an elongated job search. Even for those of you who want to stay in the academic world, if I was giving this talk 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I would have said nobody switched jobs in the academic environment except for July 1st of each year. Everybody stayed for the entire course of the academic year. It's not the key for so imagine you were coming to interview with me for your second job. You're leaving your, your first job and wanted to come to your second job. And I said, how soon can you start working? And you say, I can start working October 4th. October 4th. I say, how soon? I'm interviewing three different people. How soon can you start working? I can start working June 4th. How soon can you start working? I can start working July 4th. I'm not going to start working July 4th. It's the holiday. 180 days notice. 60 days notice, 90 days notice. If I'm the hypothetical employer, who am I going to want to hire first, assuming they're all equally uh, excellent candidates? So understand if your contract, if you see the employer says, if you would ever leave me, I'd be devastated. How could I find somebody quite like you to fill the void? You absolutely have to give me 180 days notice. But on the other hand, if I decide you're not a good fit for my organization, I don't want a malcontent in here. I don't want somebody who's going to be a destructive personality. I'm going to give you 30 days to this, and I might pay you to stay home. Your dating game red flag should go up saying, what's going on? What's that employer's reputation? What happened to the last three or four people that that uh, employer hired? How long did they last? Why did they leave all those circumstances? You're all in a, in a, in a very small sorority slash fraternity. If you go out here on Market Street, you're the 0.001%. There's not a lot of people like you. So use your, your skills, your training, your background, your training program to open up opportunities for you, to do your due diligence and do your homework about the place that you're joining. As you're thinking about a job, your attendings are likely going to be a good resource for you. 
who knows somebody who knew somebody who worked at that place where you're going. Um, if any of you were in your last year have been approached by headhunters, headhunters can be a great resource. A headhunter might tell you lots of things. It's a wonderful job. It never rains here. You're going to love the quality of work. You're going to have a you know, Q2 call or Q8 call, or we're going to give you great bonuses. Put your business person hat on. Who's the headhunter working for? The headhunter's working for the employer, not for you as the prospective employee. So it's not the headhunter's best interest to say, hey, headhunter, looks like a really neat opportunity. I'm really excited. What can you tell me about the salary year two, the bonus, the opportunity for advancement to become a partner or a shareholder or a full professor? What's the non-compete look like? What's the professional liability policy look like? It's not in their best interest. It was great points. I'm glad you raised all of that. Let me go back and talk to the employer if those things change. Because the headhunter is likely going to get paid when you sign the contract, when you show up for day one, or they're on a monthly retainer. So they can be a wonderful resource, but don't explicitly or exclusively rely on everything they're saying because they're not looking out for your best interest. I've never had, in all the years I've been uh, practicing attorney, any individual employee who had a headhunter working for them. They almost always work for the employer. Okay, so understand how to term and termination for sure. There's the without cause, the marriage isn't working out, we want to end it. There's also four cause. Four cause is real serious things. You lose your license, you lose your DBA, you violate our policies and procedures. Make sure you get the policies and procedures. Your employment contract may be 15 pages, and there's one line throwaway in there that says, employee shall really abide by all employers' policies and procedures. You get them. They get them. Because what happens if there's a difference between what the contract says and what the policies and procedures say? Your contract can only be amended if both you as the employee and the employer agree to an amendment, which means they need to sign something. The policies, if I'm the employer, I can change the policies whenever I want. You don't even know about it necessarily because they're my policies, but you're going to be bound by it. So understand how the contract can be terminated. Because generally when there's a four-post termination, you've done something really wrong. And they're not going to have you stick around for 180 or 90 or 60 or 30 days. You could be gone immediately if something bad happens. So you're going to hear stories about colleagues out there who have been fired for a cause. Uh, I've had clients with drug problems, alcohol problems, uh, what I'll call uh, inappropriate conduct uh, in the workplace. You know, keeping out with the Me Too movement, there's a lot more appropriate sensitivity to the way the interactions are. There's the disruptive behavior policies that they have for themselves. So you are probably familiar with colleagues who their temperament might be a little more edgy than others, and they're you know, prone to raise their voice, they're prone to be you know, maybe not as professional as they would like in the normal, calm day. There's disruptive physician policies out there. I don't think they're going to get rid of you immediately. Okay? Lots of nuances in terms of the term and termination process. So first thing is understand the compensation. Second thing is understand the term and termination versions. Third thing I'd say is make sure you understand the details of the contract. Everything in a contract means something. Every paragraph, every sentence, every word. If it's drafted properly, it's in there for a reason. If one contract says an employee may do X, Y, or Z, and another contract says an employee shall do X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z are certainly important. We need to make sure we understand what X, Y, and Z is. May is permissive, shall is mandatory. One word changes around the expectations for both sides in terms of the way the contract works. It's not that your employer is looking to pull wool over your eyes and trick you. They're in business too. And if the employer was burned in the past, they'd be foolish not to take proactive steps to make sure they're not burned in the future in terms of something that happens to you. So understand everything in the contract. If something doesn't make sense, ask why it's in there. Ask what it means. If you're not satisfied with the answer, ask again. It's important. It's your employer. It's your livelihood. Don't take for granted because somebody says, here's the contract. Just sign this. Everybody else is signing this. Ask the questions if you're not Okay, so first is compensation. Second is term and termination. Third is all the details. Fourth big thing to think about, and it's, I know it's going to sound counterintuitive. If you leave that first job, or that first job asks you to leave, what can you can and can't do after you leave? Virtually every one of your contracts is going to have a non-compete clause or some variation of a non-compete clause, which will basically say, you, as the employee, if you stop working for me as the employer, you agree you shall not compete with me by working within a certain radius for a certain period of time. 
If you're working in Manhattan, the non-compete may be city blocks. Uh, I, I'll never forget, I remember reading some of these contracts, I was taking a job in Manhattan where it said, you shut not work south of House Street. That's the way they drew the non-compete. They didn't care if you were in Midtown or you were uptown. You will not work south of House Street was the way they viewed their capture area. If you're working here in Philadelphia, imagine there's a non-compete that says, if you stop working for me here, you will not work anywhere within a 15 mile radius of my office. The number 15 miles from right here takes you. It covers all of Center City. It goes all the way north to Abington. It goes all the way west out past the main line hospitals. Because the employer's going to do it as the crow flies, not the way the school board or Kelly Drive or 95 takes you. They want it to be as long as possible. Go 15 miles south, it's, it's somewhere in Delaware County. It's near broadcast the airport. Go 15 miles east, you cover a good chunk of South Jersey in terms of where it is. That's a pretty broad the employer wants to protect what they're doing. If you think about the dramatic growth of the academic medical centers in the area, the dramatic growth of private practices, imagine there's five different practice sites where your employer has. And they say five different 15-mile radii from each of those places where we have offices. Imagine if you only worked at two of those offices. Draw five different circles around the Delaware Valley in terms of where you can't be. That could be pretty difficult for you. So for some of you, the most important consideration is going to be the non-compete. How do I narrow it down so that I can stay in the community where I If you say, geez, my, my first job I want to be in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia area, this is where I want to stay, this is where I want to meet my significant other, this is where my significant other is, this is where I want to raise my family and have kids, the non-compete can be pretty important for you. If any of you are married or in a relationship with another physician, you have two different sets of non-competes in the world that you've got. And presumably, if any of you are in that situation, you don't want a little harder if you can avoid it. You don't want to have to rent an apartment because somebody has a 15 or 20 mile long compete and oh by the way, almost all the hospital medical staff by all say you have to be able to get to the hospital within 30 minutes when you're on call for any emergent situation. You don't want to sit in the hospital one night a week. Understand the ramifications of how these things work. So there's going to be a non-compete for a certain period of time as well. It might be one year, it might be